One day last summer, on the big hill back of St. Anthony, we chanced upon this breathtaking view of the northernmost coast of Newfoundland. The ocean, the sky, the shoreline, and one lone shrunken iceberg dying under the hot August sun. In the sheltered coves, the fog lingered and seemed to cast a spell. As it swirled and smoked about the rocks, it was easy to drift back in time, to conjure up ghosts of the past. The Vikings, the Dorset Eskimos, the Basque whalers, and more recently, the cod fishermen from Brittany and Normandy in France. They lived here, they walked these shores, and now nothing remains, just the occasional crumbling headstone buried in the moss and grass. Yes, we Newfoundlanders are but one link in a long chain of peoples drawn to live on the edge of this cold but rich northern sea. Lloyd Curtis came from the Horse Islands as a young chairman, met Lucy, married and settled down in St. Lunaire. It was a good fishery down here in years, and the family came along and now they're growing up, something's gone. Eventually I'll be left me and the wife alone. <laughs> That's for a while, usually what that. Time don't be long going. That's just over 30 years ago since I left our son's come down here. <laughs> Good. They have been a good life, yes. If we had a good fish for these last three or four years, it would be much better. These waters once teemed with codfish, but for the past three years, the fishery has been a failure in St. Lunaire. It's discouraging for Lloyd and Lucy, but even worse for their children. One son has already left the boat to seek work in Goose Bay. A daughter is pounding the pavement in Toronto. It's a troubling time for the Curtises, watching the children go, struggling to make ends meet, wondering if the inshore fishery can ever come back. We can't make a decent living, so we're only just getting by, that's all. Getting by. I wonder where the next dollar is going to come to to fix our bills. People love it here, everybody. People who was born and raised here loves it here. A lot of people don't want to leave. Young people like it around. They don't want to leave. They want to settle here. One time your fish be around the latter part of May. We put out the gillnets and we started getting a few fish in May month. But now you can't get a fish before July, late July. These fellas here had nits out and all they do is go bring in probably either 10 or 10 or 12 fish and 25, 30 nits. Better. Despite the low landings, the Curtises and the other families around here keep at it, pulling together, hoping that the fish will strike in like they did years ago. Lloyd can recall when boats would flock to this bay from all over Newfoundland, and rarely would they fail. There used to be a one whole burnt here years ago. We bought up a lot of fish here, this bird. Is this always your bird? No, no, it's a dried bird. The jaw in the air, what we call the second bird. And the first bird's now mostly on the outside side. That's a pretty good one. Used to be a good bird, but no good now, no fish. <laughs> Used to be a lot of traps in around the bay, on over on that side, and right up there, that point right up there. Not used now, the fish don't come up here, the same. Okay, you'll uh, be ready to dump off, Nidden boys. You can see what we got now. You got what you call a dip net full of carbs. Oh boy. Not so much as Tom got. No, I'm just. Um... That's it. It's a haul for nutty. And that's, that's the way that's it's that been. First one. I've had a lot of them. Not only me, but a good many more around here. 
Lloyd, years ago, that'd be unheard of, I suppose, would it? Not often you'd, you'd see a water hall like that. No, not often, no. Years ago. That's disappointing. Yes, sir, that's disappointing. Well, that's all we can do. Get up tomorrow morning now and five o'clock, get on the go again. It's not just the small inshore boats that are having trouble. The bigger vessels that can fish further offshore have been having a rough time of it here off the northern tip too. Some of them fish around Belle Isle, which lies several hours steam to the north. They carry ice with them, of course, for they're gone for several days at a time. Belle Isle is a rough, windy place, far offshore, ringed with cliffs, but it's known as a place where the fish never fail. Here's how longliner fisherman Rex Saunders describes the fishery at Belle Isle this year. Poor. Really? Nothing. Haven't been anything. I thought Belle Isle was always good. Always oh, supposed to be. <laughs> Did you ever know it to fail before? Or? No, never known it to fail before. No, last year now, this time, we had well over 100,000 money to one, one jet trap. Yeah, we used to get 20, 25, up to 30,000 a haul. And this year what? This year, uh, well, the same bird and the same trap, only but this year we got uh, four traps. Between the two boats of us. Last night we come in with 6,000. And then one of them traps had uh, five nights on, a jet trap. Why, so that's nothing for Bell Island. No, it's a complete failure. Complete failure. That's the story we heard wherever we traveled in northern Newfoundland this summer. Here on the northern tip, it was bad. But on both sides of the straits, it was even worse if that was possible. Then came word that a bit of fish had struck in at Gunner's Cove nearby, so we went there to see for ourselves. We found Wilburn Hill and his crew out at their trap. Some small fish were meshed, a good sign, and sure enough, when the twine was dried up, there was a bit of fish to be dipped aboard. It was a heartening sight. Yet the fishermen knew the sad truth that this would be considered a miserable catch for such a prime birth just a few years ago. And they knew too that for every haul like this, there'd be 20 water hauls that day. Most boats would be lucky to get 30,000 pounds of fish for the full trap voyage this summer. The Curtises back in St. Lunaire had a bit of fish that day too. They were all busy at the community wharf, gutting and cleaning the day's catch. A ray of hope for Lloyd and his crew, 1,500 pounds. Better than nothing, yet they realized it wasn't much for a crew of five at the peak of the season, especially considering how much gear they hauled to get it. We all 17 nits, jab trap, a cod trap. We make up, I guess, something like uh, 1,500 pounds. That's not much fish, is That's it? That's not very much fish, no sir. No, no but we just had a jap trap now, a very small, yeah. small fish. Yeah. Usually all along we was getting very good fish, you know, nice, nice fish. Half, I would say, half our trap fish would be gillin' fish. Yeah. Size. You know. What do you blame it on? Is there any, any reason for it? Oh, I don't know. I say, I guess it's the same question that's been asked over probably hundreds of times. It's offshore. We wonder, I guess the most people on the coast down here are wondering if there's offshore dragon and stuff. Now, I know this area, we don't like winter dragon on an Elton Banks. Because we can, we think, to do, do some damage to the Northern Peninsula. Now, have you ever seen it as bad as this before? Yes, I've seen it worse this last two summers, summer past and summer before. So this is three in a row? This is three in a row. Now, if you don't pick up, well, after this month, it should be over. Okay. Now, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to making a good summer. But now, will you survive? I mean, or, or how long can fishermen take that kind of uh, fishery? I don't, if we don't make a half decent summer this summer, I don't know how we're going to make it. We don't know how we're going to make it. A cry of despair we heard from many fishermen in the north and west this year. After three disastrous years in a row, for many, it's now a question of survival.
Cook's Harbor, even closer to the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula. Now if there's any fish in the ocean, the Cook's Harbor fellows will catch them. This was always a wonderful place for fish. People used to come here from all over the island years ago. It's the home of the codfish. But it seems these days have passed into history, even here in Cook's Harbor. Don't be fooled by the impressive lineup of longliners and draggers at the FPI plant. Most of them are coming in with miserably low landings. In fact, it's scarcely worth setting their nets. As a result, there's not been much work at the FBI plant this year. The women won't qualify for unemployment insurance this winter for sure. And there's been lean pickings for the young brigade of cod tongue cutters too. While FPI takes the cod, Carroll Fisheries Limited buys the blackbacks from the inshore boats. Incredible as it may seem, these little flatfish have saved the day for many a fisherman now that the codfish have disappeared. I spoke with owner Gertie Larkin about the marketing of fillets from these tiny black-backed flatfish. They're pretty small fillets, but I believe you get two fillets from each fish, do you? That's true, yeah. We get the, a black one on one side and the white on the other. And do you get the same price now for each fillet? Or? No, no. Much different prices in the, in the fillet. The white one is The white one is much better than the... Does it taste better or just the look, I wonder? I'm not sure. <laughs> Most of the people say that the black taste is better. Really? But uh, the look of it, I guess it got a, a black texture to the meat. But now you seem to be putting through quite a bit. I, I believe it's saved the day for a lot of boats here, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Most uh, the past two weeks, we've been putting through like 10 to 15,000 a day. And that's pretty well all the fishermen here are catching, all the small boatmen are catching. That's it? true, yeah. It's all just land fishermen, right? How much now could a, could a boat land in you know, a good day's fishing say? Oh, 12, 1,500 pounds is a... It's kind of a good day fishing for the blackback. Yeah, I see. They only have a small amount of nets out for that, right? So this has been going on for a while now. I mean, this is an, an industry that's been established here, isn't it? Oh, yes. Fishermen gear up for, for the blackback here the same as, as they do for the cod or any, any other fish, you know. But those same fishermen now of 10, 15 years ago, what would they be after? They'd be after cod, I suppose. Just cod alone here then, yeah. In the traps? In the traps, yeah. And that's all gone, is it? Oh, yeah. There, there haven't been a cod trap out here this year. I suppose first year ever in Cook's Harbor there haven't been a cod trap in a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, no, I don't believe this is the only species you've tried. You've tried other uh, unusual types of fish over the years, haven't you? Oh, yeah. We've been, uh, we've been trying some whelks or cuckoos or yeah. <laughs> this year. We've got a, a crusher made up by the Marine Institute that we're trying out. Yeah. And we're hoping maybe to, to get it established by the fall. And you're in the lump roll business? Oh yeah, we do lump roll, yeah. Yeah. And the way to do it. We've done some smelts this past week. Smelt, lump roll, blackback, and cuckoos. All yeah. kinds of strange yeah. creatures. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I suppose you're forced to do that if, with the fishery failing, the cod fishery failing like it has been in years. Oh yes. Uh, well right now the landsman wouldn't wouldn't be getting a tang if only for the blackback. You know, it's they're not getting a big price for them, but uh, it's better than an empty net. Better than nothing, yeah. yeah. Some fishermen aren't going to believe this. Catching flatfish instead of codfish in Cook's Harbor. Well, that's just what Oz Elliott was doing that day last summer. Just a gunshot from the land in waters that once teemed with cod. So Oz, I suppose you're fishing this now. A good bit of the year, are you, or is it just a oh, seasonal yeah. thing? No, a good bit of the year. Not up to the last thing. When do you start in? July, middle of July. Well, that's the keeping season is over. We'll go that black, black, black back. And then right up to the fall. Right on up, yeah. And if you had nets for cod now, you wouldn't do much with it? No, sir. No. Do you ever get any at all on this net? It's a big mesh though, isn't it? Yeah. What's that, six inch mesh? Six inch, yeah. Are these plentiful now, Oz, is when you started? 
No, we're not. You are very good first start here we go. It seems like you're getting scared too. Fair number of people, that is now than this though. Oh, it is. How long have you been fishing them now? Hard to hear, huh? I guess it's pretty important to you now. Oh, it is. Usually fishermen long for a bigger boat, but not Roy Saunders, who was fishing nearby. Low landings forced him away from the longliner cod fishery. He now fishes flatfish from a speedboat. Roy, how much uh, blackback now do you get in a good day's fishing? Four and four to seven hundred pounds. I see. Yeah. And you've been, been at it for years. a while now, have you? Well, I've been at it now ever since Caitlin got over anyway. I've yeah. Caitlin for a while. But this is not your first year at it though, is yeah. it? Is it? It's, well, yeah, I was, we always had a long liner. I see. It's the first year to a small boat. I a little, see. Quite a bit of difference, you know? Yes, for sure, but <laughs> there's not yeah. much. I guess the long liner fishery is not very no, happy that's, either. You no, know, that's true. That's, it's too big expense for wee fellers anyway. Yeah. We just give it up. We just don't have much other choice, I guess. There's just not much fish out there, eh? No, there's not. I guess there's no lift on that little small stuff. Seems like that's just a goal but right now. It How much fish like now that. would you get in, in, in your long liner if you were gill netting out even? <laughs> not very much, I wouldn't have. Not kind of other boats anyway, so I mean, I usually go by them. It wouldn't be too much. I was bound, five or six hundred pounds of that day. And it's not even worth setting a contract? No, it's not even tall, not even around here, right? Eh? I've been adding it here all the year and I got five or six fish. I ain't sold one cod yet this year. And so on. But I've been got just enough to eat. So the black pack is saving That's the day for I've you. That's what I've been doing, yeah. And that now that few little lumps for a while and then the cape, huh? You know, at this area. Only for that wouldn't be none. You know, probably just have to pack up and go away. Well, what else would be with you? Not around here. Cook's Harbor, normally bustling with boats and fishermen at this time of year, seemed strangely quiet. Even the gulls seem to have abandoned the place. The inshore draggers were tied up. Their quotas had been taken. They must wait now for the winter fishery to begin off Port Basque. A gill netter just home from the fishing grounds. Its catch for the day, 347 pounds. That's about $111 worth of fish. When you consider the wear and tear on the nets, and the cost of fuel, there's precious little profit left to spread among a crew of four. The cod fishery here in Cooks Harbor is essentially dead. Herb Carroll, skipper of the Fortune Cape, has seen drastic changes in his community. Herb, I don't suppose you ever thought you'd see the day when, when the inshore fishermen here would be at the Blackbacks, did you? No, sir, because I'm in Cooks Harbor, one of the best communities I know at Newfoundland. Always was. Always had a lot of fish here, a lot of... Boats from outsiders to come here. We used to have perhaps seven or eighty boats tied up to this water. Draggers, small boats. Well, now that's your boat behind. You're not a small boat fisherman. You're a longliner fisherman, a uh, gillnet fisherman. How, how have you been doing with the bigger boat, though? Have you managed to get a bit of fish out of here? No, one of the worst years. I suppose we got 30,000 out of it. Take it on. 30,000 pounds of fish and in a year. And the boat's got less than that. Really? Now, you can go further out, so there's no fish further out either. Then. There's no fish nowhere, not in the Gulf. No fish nowhere. We can go off 12, 15 miles towards Bell Isle and still no fish. And what about other communities around? Now they're pretty well the same, aren't they? Well, right from Cape Ball, right to right through the Gulf, is the same. Shortly afterwards, Herb and his crew decided on one last desperate attempt to salvage what was left of the year. They steamed all the way down the Labrador coast to Domino, where they enjoyed two weeks of good fishing. Then the cod vanished there too. Lloyd Curtis and his boys steamed 12 hours in their open trap skiff back to the Horse Islands in a desperate but futile bid to find some fish. Back home in St. Lunaire, they tried trawling, but the lines were empty. Finally, it simply wasn't worth going out anymore. Lloyd Curtis found a job cutting brush. It's a bitter pill for someone who's always managed to make a comfortable living from the sea. He and others on this shore are frustrated and disappointed. Yeah, pretty disappointed. And discouragement too. There's a lot of people who plan on giving up fish for it. Young people, pretty discouraged for them. They're talking about leaving. Now we're losing a lot of our young people this year. A lot of our young people gone. 
under the failure of Fisher. It's the only way we can understand it. It's a failure of Fisher. Your own son left, I think, because my, the fishery was so my poor. My son left and went to Goose Bay, on to a poor fishery. Back in Lloyd and Lucy Curtis's home, with a photo album on the table bringing back memories, it was hard not to feel sympathy for parents who must watch their children go, and anger that we can't seem to manage our fishery so that it will support more of our young people. Lucy feels that their son, who is now working in Goose Bay, had no choice. I guess he got fed up and he couldn't make any money and was working hard and coming in and, you know, it was really depressing. Morning after morning, come home, uh, probably some mornings a bit of fish and some none. And, uh, so eventually he just packed up and left? Yeah, that's right, yeah. That must have been, must have been hard to see him go, I suppose. Oh, yeah, it's just hard to see him go. Uh, it's hard to see anyone from any family go in a small community, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess there's not much future in a place if, if the young people leave, is there? Fish holes on found, there's no future. I mean, there's nothing else, you can't. There's just really no jobs. There's so many people looking for the same job, right? So what about next year now, Roy? <coughs> Do you still still have hope? Are you gonna keep at it? Or? Well, I'm gonna keep at it. I got no other choice, I suppose, because you can't get to work. There's no work to get, and if there's any, well, there's only fellows with experience. You get them work. And as for Getting ready for another year, I don't know. We're planning on being on a cabin, either Belle Isle or Dar's That's what I got in my mind. So you have a The feast don't be here in the latter part of July. I'll be moving on again. That's the hope I got now. There's a quiet anger smoldering here in the north. What went wrong with the fishery, and what can be done to bring it back? It's a job to play in one sector for it, I think. Maybe we should blame the government. They're the ones that got the guidelines in. They're the ones that controls it, so they're the ones should take the blame. And you think they should control it now by cutting it off altogether? Well, according to the fishermen that I've talked to, they should. Should close the golf for a period of time where it just takes three years to rebuild the stock or five years to rebuild the stock, whatever it takes. That's pretty drastic medicine, isn't it? But uh, that's all you can do, I suppose. That's all you can do, there's no other choice. A drastic solution for a deeply troubling problem. But how can these communities here in the north survive without codfish? Everyone is wondering if the fishery can bounce back. Or will we Newfoundlanders follow the Vikings and the Frenchmen who once lived on these shores into oblivion? <laughs>